Philippians, thank you for joining us today and being part of our online celebration. We are a family, so let us know where you are watching from. Uh, just put it in the chat. Uh, greet everyone. Uh, I want to remind you today that we have people online serving you, ready to chat with you and answer your questions. So don't feel like you are so far away and by yourself. So we have a community here online and there are people serving you. So I would also like to add that if you are willing to serve online, you know, drop us a note and we will find a way that we can work together. Amen? All right. So we are continuing on our series of messages called The Champion Life. So I trust that you are enjoying the series and applying them in your life. So let me know how you are applying it. And if it is helping you, uh, just put it in the chat. Now, here's a comment that we got last week from one of you online. He said, amazing word, and thanks, Pastor Jerry. I listened to last week's word every day last week. Will not stop until this word becomes part of me. Thanks to CLC. Wow, I'm encouraged by that. Thank you for leaving that comment. And so please let us know if it's uh, ministering to you. Give us any comment, all right? So let us know by just putting it on the chat or emailing us. And for those of you who have been following uh, the series, the first week we heard the spirit of a champion. We learned the characteristics that uh, develop uh, the attitude of a champion. Then last week we heard about the sacrifice of a champion. We learned that there is a cost to achieving great things in life. We must be willing to sacrifice to succeed. Today, I want to talk about the steadfastness of a champion. So I'd like us to pray and, and uh, join me in prayer today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you today. We thank you for this privilege that we can hear your word even through the airwaves, even online. And we pray, God, that your word will come forth and it will come into our hearts, and your, word, your Holy Spirit will illuminate it so that we, it'll bring a, a transformation in our lives so that we can demonstrate it every day. So Lord, we commit this time to you now. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Friends, champions are called to be steadfast in their convictions in order to be victorious. Steadfastness is one of the major traits of a champion. Now, what is steadfast? Well, Webster's defines it as firmly fixed or established, not fickle or wavering, constant, firm, resolute, unswerving, steady. So champions are firm in their purpose and unwavering in their pursuit of their God-given calling. If we are going to be a champion in life, there are four areas where we need to be steadfast. The first one is steadfast in adversity. You know, adversities come to anyone. To be alive means to live with adversities, troubles, conflicts, trials, sufferings. You know, it's part of life. Jesus said in this world, there will be many troubles, but rejoice because I have overcome the world. So wh whether you like it or not, you will face these difficulties because there is an enemy, the devil, who wants to destroy your life. And for as long as we are alive and breathing, there will be challenges. But we need to persevere to rise above the circumstances. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 to 10, it said, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Friends, champions are alert and know that there is an enemy. The enemy, the devil, wants, to, uh, wants nothing else but to destroy you. He uses people and circumstances to pull you down. But Peter says, resist him and stand firm in the faith. You are not the only one going through it. Now, you may go through it for a while, you know, but God himself 
will restore you, make you strong, firm, and steadfast. You know, Joseph was a champion. The Bible says that he received a, a dream from the Lord that he would be in authority and he will rule over others, including his brothers. But what he had to go through is from one adversity to another. His brothers hated him. They beat him up and left him for dead. They eventually sold him as a slave. He was falsely accused and was imprisoned. He was deceived by his inmate who promised to help him out. But he didn't, he didn't stop and felt sorry for himself and blamed the world for his predicament. What the devil wants to do is to destroy you and let you give up so that the plan of God for your life will be aborted and you will not be able to overcome your circumstances. Joseph remained steadfast and moved on and was successful even in the midst of adversity. In Genesis 39, verse 2 to 3, it says this, The Lord was with Joseph, and he prospered, and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did. Friends, again we see that Joseph prospered, and he had success in everything he did because the Lord was with him. The Apostle Paul also went through some difficulties and sufferings. We talked about this last week. He had one adversity after another. Now let's look at the scripture again. It said in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24 to 27. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my own countrymen, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false brothers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. In spite of what he had gone through, he continued to move on and he was steadfast in the midst of his adversities. The Lord blessed him that he was able to establish many churches and transform regions because of his steadfastness. Well, Peter says, the Lord will restore you after you have suffered a while and make you strong. God uses your sufferings to strengthen you. He turns your tragedies to triumphs. So you will go from victim to victor. Friends, you cannot become an overcomer without anything to overcome. You become a champion because there is a fight. What adversities are you facing today? Let me encourage you. Don't give up. Remain steadfast and God will take you through See, the good news is Jesus knows your pain and problems, and he will never leave you nor forsake you. On the other side of adversity is your victory. Amen. All right, so uh, declare that with me. I will be steadfast in adversity. Yes, go ahead. Now, another uh, area that we need to be steadfast in is to be steadfast in faith. You know, there are times when you will go through things that you don't even understand. Sickness hits us or, or our loved ones, financial disaster, a crisis, a tragedy, times that you are weakened. But in, it is in those times where you need to be steadfast in your faith. Now, I remember a time when we had just bought this building and the city passed a new law that places of worship are no longer allowed in this area. For about three years, we battled with this problem. It was challenging because I felt I heard from God uh, that this is the building we are to buy. Now we are in this situation. Churches were being prohibited from operating. And one church I know sold their building and moved. We asked for legal advice who said there is no guarantee that we will be able to uh, or we will be allowed to stay. And other pastors have told me to sell while I can. We faced so much adversities that it was discouraging. 
and others have bailed out and thought we were crazy. But we were steadfast in our faith in God that he will take us through. So after all of that, God miraculously turned everything around and now we are still here. <laughs> now this building is now the church home of CLC for generations to come and a testimony of God's faithfulness. Now have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt like I don't deserve this? Um, you know, I am serving God. I, I love him. I'm a good person. Yet these things happen to me. Well, the devil uses the circumstances to try to put doubt in your faith. Do you remember Job in the Bible? How do you think he felt? He was a righteous man, yet he lost everything he had. His children died, his cattle, which was his means of living, it was gone. He was afflicted with disease. And even his wife asked him to curse God. When we go through something like that, the tendency is to waver in our faith. But Job was a champion. He remained steadfast in his faith in God, even though the, uh, the most difficult time in his life, even when he went through those things. Job chapter 1, verse 20 to 21 says this. At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. In all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. See his attitude? Lord, you have given and taken away. I have lost everything, but I still praise you. <laughs> now that is a champion. In all of this, Job did not sin. He stood firm in his faith in God. He did not walk away. He did not rebel. He stood in his faith in God. At the end, the Bible says in Job 42, verse 10, after Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord made him prosperous again and gave him twice as much as he had before. Friend, as a child of God, he enables you by his spirit to be an overcomer. Now, the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were champions. They had faith in God. The king Nebuchadnezzar wanted them to bow to his gods and idols, but they were steadfast in their faith. They refused to waver in their faith, and they did not bow to his gods in spite of the threat that they will be burned in the furnace. Since they did not worship the false god, they were tied and thrown into the fiery furnace. But the Lord delivered them, and they did not burn or even smell like fire. In the end, the king believed in the true God. Look what it says in Daniel chapter 3, verse 28. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Friends, our faith will be tested through the fire. But when we are steadfast in our faith, God takes us through. And as a result, we become a living testimony that we serve a true god. Now declare that with me. I will be steadfast in faith. Yes, go ahead. Now another area is to be steadfast in prayer. Now true champions recognize that they cannot do things without God. They need the help of God in order to have lasting success. They may win a prize or overcome something occasionally. But to have lasting success, we need God. Because God will enable us to go through the challenges over time. It's not just a one win. It's not just overcoming one thing. It's throughout your lifetime, overcoming and living a life of a champion, we need God. He guides us, empowers us to overcome. God says to the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 33, verse 3, Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. 
See, God spoke to them while they were in captivity feeling hopeless. But God says, there are great and mighty things that we do not even know. And through prayer, God reveals his strategy. Now, I remember the time when the Lord showed me to buy this building that I'm talking about as the church home for CLC. You know, at that time, it was about $4.5 million then, and, and we had no money. But through the leading of the Holy Spirit, I, I signed and, and bought it. It took three years from the time we, we bought it to take possession of it because we couldn't raise the money. Now, I remember negotiating with the owners almost every week. It was a case of deal or no deal. Today, we would have a deal, and then he would change his mind, and then another deal. Uh, there's no deal again. And, and we went to banks and other lenders, and it was just taking so long that there were people who doubted that this was from God. And LV and I stood uh, in prayer, and, and it, it, she stood with me, and we were steadfast in prayer. And as we prayed, God gave us strategies on how to finance it, even when banks didn't want it. Our leadership team and our intercessors continued to be steadfast in prayer until we had the breakthrough. Eventually, God miraculously touched the heart of the owner who even financed it. Amazing. See, today, he's no longer in the picture. And Champion Life Center is the proud owner of this building, which serves as the home of the champions and international resource center for our ministries. Praise God. Hallelujah. Do you ever wonder why we are called Champion Life Center? Well, now you know. Amen. Well, friends, champions are steadfast in their prayer life. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 says this. Pray at all times and on every occasion in the power of the Holy Spirit. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all Christians everywhere. You know that Daniel was a champion. He was a man who loved God and was prayerful. He prayed three times a day, but the people hated him because of his faith in God. They devised a scheme that will make it illegal for him to pray so that they can have something against him. We find in Daniel chapter 6, verse 10 to 11, now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had done before. Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. See, Daniel remained steadfast in his prayer to God. Even though he was threatened, even though he knew that his life was in danger, he was steadfast in his prayer. He continued to do what he was doing before, even when there were people going against him. And they threw him in the lion's den, but God protected him, and he was unharmed. Friends, the devil will try to stop us from praying because he knows there's power in prayer. But we need to remain steadfast to continue going before God. Now, another man is Abraham was a champion. In Genesis 19, Abraham prayed for Sodom that God would spare that city. He asked God to save the city if 50 were found righteous. Then he went down to 45, then to 40, then to 30, then to 20, and finally to 10. So because of Abram's steadfastness in prayer, God was willing to spare Sodom for the sake of 10 righteous. Friends, we must continue to pray and ask God for help. Don't give up praying to the Lord. Maybe you're praying for healing. Don't give up. Maybe you're praying for a job or for your work. Don't give up. Maybe you're praying for a financial breakthrough or that God would, some, would do something about your finances. Or you're praying for favor from the Lord. Don't give up. The Bible says when we call upon him, he will answer us and show us great and mighty things we have not seen. And there may be times when you don't even know what to pray. But don't worry. In the Bible, Romans chapter 8, verse 26 to 27 says this. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. 
We do not know what he ought to pray. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. Friends, when we open ourselves to the Spirit of God, we will be able to pray in the Spirit and pray in accordance to God's will. So declare that today. I will be steadfast in prayer. Yes, if you're a champion, you'll be steadfast in prayer. And finally, to be steadfast in service. Let us be steadfast in our service to the Lord. There's nothing that the devil would want more than to keep you from serving the Lord. If he can do that, then he can divert you from God's plan and purpose. He wants to render you useless in the kingdom of God so that he can stop the church from advancing. Here's what it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Whatever it is you are doing for God, don't let anything move you. Don't let anything stand in your way. Give your best to the work of the Lord because he is your rewarder. So declare that today. I will be steadfast in serving the Lord. Amen. Friends, God desires to have champions to advance the cause of Christ. He's looking for people in whom he can pour out his spirit and use them to advance his kingdom. He's looking to raise people who will walk into their destiny and fulfill their purpose in God. Are you that person? Friend, he desires to transform your life. But you and I must be steadfast and not waver. We must be like Jacob who wrestled with the Lord and said, I will not let you go until you bless me. Even though the socket of his hip was dislocated and was in pain, he still hangs on. After that, his name was changed from Jacob, meaning a deceiver, to Israel, which means prince with God. Because he was steadfast, he literally changed his destiny. His reputation was changed. He was no longer a deceiver who had to deceive his brother to be blessed. From that moment on, he was blessed because the Lord blessed him. A whole nation is named after him, Israel. See, God wants to do the same for you and for me. It will be uh, steadfast. If, if we will be steadfast, he can change our circumstances. So be steadfast in adversity, in faith, in prayer, and service. Amen? So, friends, as we conclude the Champion Life series, I trust that you're not going to settle for mediocrity. Your life means something. Don't settle for less. Be a champion in everything you do. Continue in the journey of making a difference in our world. Don't allow people and circumstances to hinder you from fulfilling your God-given dreams. Instead, align your, your life with God. Develop the spirit of a champion. Be willing to make the sacrifices of comfort and reputation and possession in order to pursue your calling. And no matter what happens, be steadfast in adversity, faith, prayer, and service. You cannot help but be a champion because the champion is in you. You will have great success because the Lord is with you. Do you receive that? Hallelujah. So give me an amen. You know, put it in our chat. Friends, before we end, I would like to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus in your life. You may have been listening to these messages and you're saying, well, I don't know uh, about Jesus yet in my life. I, I'd like to have Jesus in my life. If that's what it takes for me to be a champion in life, I would like Jesus. Now, if that's you today, if you're watching from wherever you are, you want to receive Jesus, he can give you a champion life. So please join me in prayer and repeat after me. 
right? So just bow your heads and pray with me. Pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I confess that I've gone in my own way. I have sinned against you. I repent of my sin and ask you to come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior, and I will follow you all the days of my life. Amen. Friends, if you have prayed that prayer, please let us know. Put it in the chat, and our team is standing by to uh, walk with you uh, to your next steps. Or send us a note through any of our contact information. Well, our time is up. So let me pray a blessing over you. All right? So um, just gather your, your family, wherever you are. We're just going to pray a blessing. So uh, just pray with me. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace. May cause you to walk under an open heaven. May cause you to prosper in every area of your life, even as your soul prospers. May open doors of opportunities for you that you can enter in and be victorious. And God will fill you with his grace and love and the power of his spirit throughout this week. And until he comes, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Well, friends, thanks for being with us today. See you again next week. Thank you for watching today's celebration. If you have committed your life to Christ today, we have a special gift for you. Please send us a note by visiting our website at championlife.ca and select contact. You can also send your prayer request or call us by phone. And remember, you can give your tithes and offering to our website, text to give, use the Champion Life Center app for e-transfer. Just make sure to select the location that you are giving to. Please join our Connect Lounge after the celebration. Link can be found on our Facebook page. And lastly, don't forget to follow us on our social media pages. This is the best way to stay updated and engaged with our Champion Life community. And we want to stay connected with you. We are so glad that you have joined us and we hope to see you online next Sunday. And God bless you. To your embrace, light up the world forever. You are more, you are more than my words will ever say. Jesus